Which is better, the Nintendo Switch or Valve's Steam Deck? In today's video, I will attempt to answer that question, going through several aspects about each device and giving a point to the system that wins that category. First thing we should look at is the portability, cause you know, that's kind of the gimmick for both of these devices. Being able to take your games with you on the go and play them anywhere. Now the Switch has multiple forms, including the Switch Lite and the original Switch model. We'll be looking closely at the definitive version today, and that's the Switch OLED model. All these devices are great handheld systems and are fairly easy to take around with you. If you're using the Switch exclusively portable, I would say the best form factor is the Switch Lite. But if you're playing outside, I would shoot for the OLED model due to the bright and colorful display. Up against these Switch models, we have the Steam Deck. This beast is made by Valve, the company behind the biggest PC gaming platform, Steam. This console was released in early 2022, five years after the Switch, which means it has newer tech inside and it should be more powerful. Both of these devices will be able to be taken anywhere, but the Switch has one big advantage, the Joy-Cons. The benefit of having two controllers on the side. So if you need to settle it in Smash while you're on the bus, then having two separate Joy-Cons is perfect for that. Let's not forget about the size and weight as well, which are important factors for portability. Compared to pretty much any version of the Switch, the Steam Deck is much bigger and heavier. That's not necessarily a bad thing overall, but it does affect the portability. Valve also includes a carrying case with every Steam Deck, so if you take it with you while traveling, that's one less thing you have to buy. But a Switch will slip into any backpack and take up a lot less room than the Steam Deck will. So for portability, I'm giving this one to the Switch. Now let's go over docking. Every Switch, aside from the Switch Lite, comes with a dock in the box with rocks and locks, allowing you to hook it up to the TV and detach the Joy-Cons and experience it more like a traditional console on the big screen. Since essentially every Switch owner has one of these docks, if you live in multiple locations or if you're visiting a friend who already has one and you want to play a game on your Switch, you can just pop it in theirs. Sure, you can dock the Steam Deck as well, but it comes with a few drawbacks. For one, while the Steam Deck will work with any USB-C hub as a dock, it doesn't come with one in the box, so that's an additional cost on an already expensive device. Valve's official Steam Deck dock is a little bit on the pricey side too. If you dock to play multiplayer, then you'll need an additional controller. In fact, if you wanted to play it docked while hooked up to a TV like with the Switch, you'll need its own separate controller regardless. As unlike the Switch's Joy-Cons, the Steam Deck does not have detachable controllers. It does have one advantage over the Switch though, and that is with the Steam Deck, you can use a keyboard and mouse for more control option. And you can even use it as a portable computer using the desktop mode, but we'll get back to that later. Overall, the Switch was designed as a hybrid system, so it really shines when using the provided dock and it actually performs better when in dock mode. So I'm giving this one to the Switch as well. After looking at both systems and playing with them extensively, the battery life on both systems really depend on what games you're playing. But I found out of the box, the Switch battery lasts longer than the Steam Deck does. I've averaged the system to run handheld up to five to six hours easily on medium or high brightness, whereas I'm not seeing the Steam Deck get any more than around three to four hours. Now, of course, this varies on what you play, like I said, but with the games I'm playing, those are my results. There are things you can do to extend the Steam Deck's battery life, like limiting the refresh rate or power limiting the processor. Valve has made it easily accessible at any time using the quick access menu. While these are advanced options and might not be something the average user will want to mess around with, you can experiment with these and see what works best for you. One of the most common tweaks Steam Deck users make to extend their battery life is to change the refresh rate to 40 Hertz. This actually lowers the amount of times the screen displays a frame per second, which can have a noticeable improvement on battery life while still letting you experience games above 30 frames per second. So while you have some options to help with the Steam Deck's battery life, this point once again goes to the Switch because the battery lasts longer without having to put in any extra work. Something else that's different on both of these two systems are the displays. Both systems having a similar seven inch screen, and while the resolution is capped at 1280 by 720 on the Switch and a slightly taller 1280 by 800 on the Steam Deck, images still look sharp on both of the screens at this size. Of course, the main difference between the two is the OLED on the Switch, which looks far better than the Steam Deck's display with the true blacks and the vibrant colors. Now, if you look at the OG model and the light model, the displays are very similar and actually smaller than the Steam Deck. So you should consider that as well. It should be noted that the Steam Deck actually comes with two different screens, depending on which model you purchase. The more expensive 512 gigabyte model comes with a matte screen, which cuts down on glare and makes it much nicer to play outside or in well-lit areas. 
But if you don't need the extra built-in storage, do yourself a favor and save yourself some money and just buy one of these matte screen protectors, which will give you pretty much the same effect. And I'll link that in the description. Of course, I'll be sticking with the OLED display. In my opinion, it's the superior display. One thing to watch out for is the spooky wooky possibility of burning on the OLED display. Listen, with all my experience with my Switch OLED, I've never noticed an issue with it. Now, if I were to have one game with the same UI the entire time, then maybe I would worry a tad, but from what we've seen with other YouTubers testing this out, it really should not be a reason to avoid it, especially if you're aware of it. One more point for the Switch. Is this gonna be a sweep for the Switch? Next up are the controls, as the Joy-Cons are known to be lacking in comfort, too small, and poorly built. And let's not forget about the dreaded Joy-Con drift. They thrive on convenience, but when you have the Switch docked, it's a great time to crack out a Nintendo Switch Pro Controller. Now looking at the Steam Deck, its controls are different, with the Steam Deck having far better onboard controls, like the track pads for mouse-like movement, back buttons, better sticks, more of a grip, and of course those juicy shoulder buttons, which you can slowly squeeze to change the dynamics of certain in-game elements, like driving a car. But you completely lose all those features if you dock the system. I mean, you can still use a Steam Deck as a controller when docked, but it's not going to be very comfortable or convenient to be attached to the system when it's sitting in the dock. Obviously, you can use another controller with all those features, like the Valve Steam controller or any other gaming controllers, including the Xbox and PlayStation controllers, and you can even use the Switch Pro controller. But the Steam Deck's built-in controls just feel special, and I will say, the system feels way more sturdy and beefier in your hands especially next to the Switch with the plastic controllers, which can sometimes feel loosely attached to the system. Another issue on the Switch are the Joy-Cons, which can sometimes feel like the wrong name. Maybe you should call them Rage-Cons, because when your controller has Joy-Con drift, it can be quite frustrating. But the Steam Deck isn't immune to this either, because it too has been reported in some cases to have some drift but nowhere near as extreme as the Switch Joy-Cons. The Switch has had multiple lawsuits because of this issue, whereas Valve makes it extremely easy to replace a stick if need be. You can also adjust the stick dead zones on the Steam Deck to help correct drift if it starts, which helps. But I'll give credit where credit is due. Nintendo has done some internal fixing with the recent Joy-Cons, and if you do come across Joy-Con drift, then they'll replace it for free. This one easily goes to the Steam Deck. The onboard controls on the Steam Deck are far superior to the Switch Joy-Cons. So what's under the hood of these bad boys? The Switch is running the NVIDIA Tegra X1 running at 1.02 GHz with a total of 4 GB of LPDDR4 RAM and the Steam Deck running with a custom AMD accelerated processing unit running between 2.4 and 3.5 GHz. And the system has access to 16 GB of LPDDR5 RAM, which is 4 times more with faster RAM. But how does this affect the games? Like with Hot Wheels Unleashed, load times are significantly better on Steam Deck. Once you're in a race, they feel identical, but the graphics being much better on Steam Deck. And if we look at the same car model, you can see much clearer reflections and sharper lines. Resolution is also 720p docked on Switch, whereas we can easily get the Steam Deck to 1080p 60 by messing with a few settings. Also in a 3D platformer like Crash Insane Trilogy, both versions run amazing. The Switch version runs at a solid 30, but the Steam Deck runs at a solid 60. And the PC version is the only way to get this game at 60 frames per second. Not even other console versions can get this to run at 60. Textures and resolution look way better on the Steam Deck too. Even the text on the levels are way clearer. Or maybe a first person shooter like Doom. First thing you'll notice is the frame rate on the Steam Deck is 60 in 720p. Absolutely flawless. Unlike the Switch's smooth 30, which rarely dips, Load times are way better on Steam Deck, and the shadows and reflections are better too. This hands down goes to the Steam Deck. But then there's games like Terraria and Stardew Valley. These games are mostly identical on both systems graphic-wise, and it may come down to the physical differences for these games. Like Stardew Valley, I get the Switch because of the local multiplayer. It's far more convenient in that case. But a game like Terraria would be better on Steam Deck due to it having access to more controls with the keyboard and mouse or the touchpads. And there's a larger modding scene on the PC version. So it's clear in games, the resolution, frame rate, shadows, and reflections are just overall better. And the clear winner is Steam Deck. There's another thing to consider when it comes to the games though, and that's flexibility. On Steam Deck, you can play almost anything. You can even use it as an actual PC in what Valve calls desktop mode. Paired with a dock or USB hub, you could use this essentially like a laptop while you're traveling or at school. And if you want to, you can replace the Steam OS with Windows or install it alongside the deck's default operating system using an SD card. Once Windows is installed, the possibilities are limitless and pretty much every PC game from every storefront slash launcher is available to you. 
That's not to say you can't install other game launchers in SteamOS. You can use Heroic Launcher to install and play games purchased on Epic or GOG right from here. And then add them to your Steam library so you can launch them in gaming mode. Once you're actually in the game, you have a full gamut of available options to fiddle around with, like the graphic settings to get the game to play the way you want it to, whereas the Switch rarely has any graphical settings at all. The Steam Deck community is growing very rapidly, and there are already plugins you can install to show how long a game will take to beat, further information on game compatibility, or even swapping out the intro videos that the Steam Deck plays when you start it up. And we're still only in the infancy stage with the Steam Deck. You'll see more and more of these things become available as time goes on. And let's not forget about modding, and I don't just mean official mods. Games like Skyrim or Fallout 4 can become essentially entirely different games through the mods that are available for them. The fact you can literally do anything you want on the Steam Deck makes it way more flexible than the Switch will ever be. While the physical Steam Deck currently is only available in plain black, you can mix up your Switch with a variety of different colored Joy-Cons, or limited special editions that Nintendo occasionally releases. However, there are a bunch of skins available for both your Steam Deck and the Switch if you want to change up how either of them look. Well, let's not forget about remote play. Do you already have a powerful gaming PC at home? You can play those games from your PC in all of their high quality goodness right from your Steam Deck so you can continue your gaming session from the couch or when you need to use those bathroom breaks. And with a bit of tinkering, you can even remote play your PS4 and PS5 games from your console to the Steam Deck. And let's not forget about the E word. The Steam Deck is capable of playing a wide range of games from first gen consoles all the way up to the PS3 and beyond. And the community has made it really easy to get this all set up. This one goes to Steam Deck. Looks like it's catching up to the Switch. Now let's take another glance at the games, because although I mentioned the games that are on both systems, there's many games that are exclusive to each system. And of course, games are important, because that's the whole point of this discussion. Without games, these systems would be useless. The Nintendo Switch has a massive catalog of their own first party games. Games like Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, a single player open world masterpiece, or family games like Super Mario 3D World and Mario Kart. There's no shortage of first party Mario games. And yes, I'm a Nintendo fanboy, and I love these games, but I can keep an open mind. Also, if you're a game collector like me and love to have physical copies of games, you won't find that on any Steam Deck, as they are all digital only. And let's not forget about the legendary sales that PC games are known for. Steam has weekly and weekend sales that rotate on a regular basis, but the real beauty comes when holidays roll around and Steam launches their massive sales with discounts up to 90% off. And you can also get PC games for the Steam Deck from third-party stores like Humble Bundle, Green Man Gaming, and more. And speaking of Humble Bundle, you can get bundles of games together for crazy cheap to build up that game library fast. As long as you don't mind waiting a while after a game releases, you can always snag a fat deal on the games you want. And you can even use Microsoft's Game Pass with the deck, albeit in streaming mode only, unless you install Windows. There's also tons of games on the Steam Deck too, like a lot more. So if you like lots of different types of games and you just wanna have access to a massive catalog, then there's plenty of games to choose from. Some games might not work 100% out of the box because they aren't Steam Deck verified, but most of the time, or with a bit of tinkering, you can get them to work. Games on Steam come with one of four levels of compatibility for the Steam Deck. Verified, which means that they will work 100% right out of the box. Playable, which means they work, but may have text that's hard to read on a small screen, or require the use of a virtual keyboard to enter names and such, or needing to customize controls to work better on the gamepad. Unknown, which means that it hasn't been extensively tested. That basically means you might need to tinker with it to get it to run. And finally, unsupported, which sadly means you're out of luck. When you first go to launch a game, it will let you know all of this information, so it shouldn't come as much of a surprise. From my experience though, every game that I've tried to play on this thing has worked. The one massive downside on the Steam Deck though, is some multiplayer games rely on third-party anti-cheat systems that just aren't compatible with Steam's operating system at the time of recording this video. So you'll need to install Windows on the Steam Deck if you wanna play games like Fortnite or Genshin Impact. While on the topic of multiplayer, people who are coming from consoles should be happy to hear that you don't need any sort of subscription service to play online with your friends. There's no Xbox Live, PlayStation Plus, or Nintendo Online service. You don't need any of those to play PC games. So that's one less thing to have to worry about and pay for. There are some games that you can get on the Steam Deck that will just never make their way over to consoles. For example, MMORPGs like World of Warcraft or pretty much any real-time strategy game. You can get these running one way or the other using the Steam Deck and the customizable controls, which make it pretty easy to play these games that weren't originally designed to be played with a controller. 
The other thing about games is that Nintendo makes the game creators optimize it for the Switch the best they can, so you know you're getting the best optimization you can get, unless you're the old version of Arc. PC games are designed to try and work with hundreds of different computer configurations, so sometimes optimization can be a hit or miss. Now both consoles have lots and lots of games, and a ton of these games are even available on both systems. We've counted over 500 already. It's really a flip of a coin here, so we're gonna give a point to each. Now finally, the price. Depending on which model you want can help determine its value. There are currently three Switches to choose, and there are three Steam Deck models to choose from. With the cheapest Switch at $200, it's easy to get into the Nintendo ecosystem, and with this model, you're stuck playing handheld, but it has the best portability factor than any other device that was mentioned in this video, and is my recommendation for if you are exclusively playing handheld. The mid-tier Switch is the OG Switch. This model comes in at $300. Then, of course, the premium Switch model, the OLED, at $350. With the best display than any other device, this is the Switch to choose if you're playing both docked and handheld. Then the Steam Decks. The 64GB base model, which is the model I have, at $400. The 256GB model at $530 with the faster SSD storage. And the 512GB model with the fastest SSD storage and the anti-reflection screen, which is also great for outdoor gaming, at $650. While on the topic of storage, I should mention that the OG Switch and the Switch Lite have a whopping 32 gigabytes of storage, and the OLED has 64 gigabytes of storage. And every Steam Deck and Switch model has a micro SD slot in it to upgrade the storage. I got the 64 gigabyte Steam Deck because I wasn't sure how much I'd use it, and I knew I could just put a micro SD in it. I have a 512 gigabyte micro SD in it right now, and I will say between all of the games on there and the amount of storage some PC games need like Ark, why you do this? I've been running out of storage quite often, and I kind of wish I got at least a 256 gigabyte model, but honestly, it's fine. It does everything a man needs. You actually can upgrade the internal storage in the Steam Deck though. It would require you taking your Steam Deck apart, so unless you are comfortable with those sorts of things, I wouldn't recommend it. I'm going to give this one to the Switch, since you can buy an OLED Switch and a 512GB SD card for around the same price as the base 64GB Steam Deck model. So, there you have it. The Switch officially beats out the Steam Deck, but just barely. I gotta give it to Valve for actually getting this many points as it did on its first attempt at a gaming console. And they are constantly releasing new updates for the Steam Deck, adding new features and quality of life additions at a blistering pace. Nintendo has had years and years of experience in this field, which it clearly made good use of. That's not to say the Steam Deck is bad in any way. These are both great systems that are a ton of fun. Let's check back in a few years when we have a Steam Deck 2 and whatever Nintendo comes out with next. If they ever come out with anything else. Obviously, this all depends on your gaming habits and preferences, but the math doesn't lie. And I think for casual gamers especially, the Switch is the way to go. But what do you think? Would you prefer the Switch or the Steam Deck? Let me know in the comments. And if you agree or disagree with anything I said in this video, let me know that too. And if you like this video, please consider liking and subscribing. I hope to see you in the next one. See you later.